chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Brad. First Corinthians chapter eleven. At this point, put it on silent. First Corinthians chapter eleven. Last week we finished up chapter ten, and we made uh, we covered that pretty quickly. But we're not going to be able to make it as far this morning, I figure. Uh, in chapter eleven, Paul offers more practical counsel to the carnal Corinthians of the church there at Corinth and they are so carnal and so worldly and so immature that he even has to deal with hair length he even has to deal with uh, how to cut your hair now that's pretty bad when, when, when somebody has to tell you uh, how to cut cut your hair, you know. And uh, now, I will say this, when we get to this section, there's some customs that they had that we no longer do today. And uh, I'll explain that when we get there. But first, let me give you the outline, and then we'll just start going verse by verse and see how far we can get this morning. And uh, the first part, we're going to see following Paul. The first point will be follow Paul. Paul is the apostle appointed to the Gentiles. Paul is the apostle of the grace of God, the gospel which we have today. He is the, he is the apostle that, that the Lord Jesus Christ handpicked in Acts chapter 9 to lead the church. He is the one who God used. Uh, I know if you uh, follow the Catholics, who, or if you're Catholic, they believe we're to follow Peter. Peter was their first pope, but, but the Lord Jesus Christ picked Paul and said, Paul, I want you to be the apostle to the Gentiles. He chose Paul to reveal the mysteries of the body of Christ, the rapture, and so forth and so on, okay? So we are to follow Paul today. So we have, we're going to deal with that. Then secondly, we're going to look at the family order, the family order. God has a divine order for everything. God is a God of order. Uh, God's not the author of confusion, is what the Bible says. So if there's confusion and a lot of chaos, uh, you can about bet the Lord's not in it. Right. Okay? Uh, so we'll deal with family order. And then we'll get into the last part of the chapter. We'll see the flippancy at the Lord's Supper. And we've dealt with the Lord's Supper several times. <laughs> Uh, of course, we have it a couple times a year, uh, but we'll be dealing with people that just take it and don't take it seriously. They're kind of flippant with it. So that'll be the outline. So let's go ahead and get into it. Chapter 11, verse 1. Paul speaking, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul was saying, do as I do. When he says, when Paul says, follow me, he didn't mean pack up your bags and literally get in line and follow him everywhere he went. He was saying, follow my example, follow my instructions, follow my lead. <coughs> you understand the difference, don't you? So when he says, follow me, that's what he's saying. Today, there's, and today you hear this a lot of times, especially if you believe the King James Bible is the word of God. If you believe certain doctrines, they say, well, you're just following a man. You're just following a man. They make it sound like you're following some man's doctrinal beliefs rather than the Bible. They, you're just following a man. Where well, the truth of the matter is, we all just follow a man. We all have people that we look to as an example of what we want to be. A lot of times we pattern our lives after someone we admire. And Paul says, follow me. He's saying, I was the example. He was the one chosen to be a pattern. In fact, look at what he said to Timothy. Uh, 1 Timothy. Turn over to 1 Timothy and let me read you a verse here. In 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Look at verse 
15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first, now watch it, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Paul was to be a pattern for us. Paul was a wicked man, but the Lord got a hold of his heart and he turned around. You see the difference? He's a pattern for us to follow. Here, let me do this. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, but anyway, uh, they always want to accuse you of following a man, following a man, and uh, like that's necessarily a bad thing. It's not a bad thing if you're following a good man. Right. If you're following a bad man, then of course that's a problem. Mm -hmm. See, Paul was not perfect. Paul, Paul, Paul had a little stiff neck in him too. You know, the Lord told him, told him a couple times not to go somewhere, and he did. He ended up getting punished for it. So should I follow Paul's example in that? No. No, we follow a man as long as he's following Christ. Look how it says. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So as long as he's following Christ, it's okay to follow him. It's okay to follow a man that's following the Lord. Okay? Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can follow a man, but if he goes to the right or to the left, you keep going straight for the Lord. You see what I mean? Let him veer off. You keep going straight. You follow a man as long as he's following the Lord. When he veers off, you keep, you just, you keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen? <clears throat> That's what is going on here. And I will say this, Paul's a better example to follow than most anybody today. Today people have sports star heroes, TV uh, stars, Hollywood stars, musicians that lost and sang wicked stuff, that they follow that, they follow the lost world and backslidden Christians rather than following somebody that loves the Lord. So to follow somebody, uh, people, people accuse you of that uh, all the time. Uh, there's, there's certain schools like... Uh, I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God from cover to cover. I believe it is God's Word for us. No question about it. I don't think that we need the Greek or the Hebrew to correct anything that's in the English King James text. I think if we believe the King James just like it is, we'll have the full revelation God wants us to have. Now, saying that in a school setting among my peers who have been to seminary, they say, well, you're just following a man. No, I'm following what I I'm following what I personally have studied and prayed out. I, I gave my testimony before. When I got saved, I was led to the Lord by the Southern Baptist by a Southern Baptist preacher, David Horton. And David Horton gave me an NIV, and I took that NIV <laughs> and I took that NIV as the Bible, the Word of God. And I went somewhere and I heard a preacher preach. King James only. It made me so mad because he just trashed my Bible. The preacher that led me to the Lord gave me this Bible and, and now you're telling me that it is not the Word of God, that it's, that it's to be thrown into trash and I'm like, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. And I got to digging. And I began to do search, research myself. And I began to study. And you know what I found? I found I was wrong. The King James Bible was the Word of God. Mm -hmm. In anger in me, he actually drove me into the Bible. And when I got into the Bible, the Lord got a hold of my heart. Amen. Amen. So was I following a man? No. I was trying to resist it. You see what I mean? The Lord showed me, amen, through personal study. But anyway, let's keep going. There's nothing wrong with following a man as long as he's following the Lord, okay? Verse 2. Now I praise you, brother, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now Paul praises them for remembering him and also keeping the ordinances. What ordinances did he talk about? Well, 
there's only two ordinances in the Word of God for the church. And that's believer's baptism. That's after you get saved, you follow the Lord in believer's baptism. We need to schedule one. We've got something that needs to be baptized. And then the Lord's Supper. So you have believer's baptism and the Lord's Supper. That's only two ordinances in the church. Okay? And we do the uh, Lord's Supper a couple times a year here. Now let's look at verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now we're getting in God's divine order. God's divine order is God the Father first. Then the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was here, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He is submissive to God the Father. So God the Father is the head, then Christ, then the man, then the woman, then the children. That's God's divine order for the home. That's the way it should be set up. Now, the world has it backwards. Have you ever noticed that? Mm -hmm. Oh, my kids is my world. My kids is my world. Everything revolves around the kids today. And the kids are the ones basically calling the shots. Mom and Dad <coughs> pretend to have control, but really they cater to what the kids want. The kids want to watch TV, they scream and pinch a fit till the TV's turned on. They get, they get their way. You, you see what I mean? They've got it backwards. And then when you turn on TV in Hollywood, this is the way it always betrays. The kids run in the house, uh, tricking mom and dad, outsmarting mom and dad, and the wife's bossing at the husband who's sitting on the sofa, lazy and won't do a thing. That's the way the world portrays it. And it's right the opposite of how God has it set up. Right. right. You have the Godhead, basically. Let's just say the Lord, amen. You've got the Lord, the man, then the woman. And that's the way it's set up. Now, we've talked about this in Ephesians 5. In Ephesians 5, the divine order is laid out again. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because you know that's the way it is. But we're getting ready to get into something that's going to take some time this morning. And it's going to go all the way through verse 16. I'll try to, I'm going to try to hit it verse by verse, but we need to make it through verse 16 to cover this section. And what we're dealing with is we're dealing with covering on, on your head. We're dealing with hair. We're dealing with a hat on your head. We're dealing with ladies, uh, uh, white of the Mennonites, women, and the Amish women. And in your Arab countries, they cover their whole head and even their face. What is that all about? Well, that was a custom they had then. And we're going to be dealing with some customs that we do not practice today. So it's a little hard to grasp what they're talking about when it's a custom that we don't participate in. And I'll give you an illustration of a custom. How many of you know there was a time in America that men wore wigs. You see a picture of George Washington and all them, uh, Ben Franklin and all them, they had those wigs on. What was that all about? <laughs> Itchy, life's ridden, nasty. I don't know about you, but I can, I can make a hat stink. I can imagine what a wig would smell like. You know, <laughs> you know that, that would have been some nasty stuff. Amen. Throw that thing off and watch it start crawling across the floor. <laughs> Somebody shoot that thing. <laughs> I mean, that would be awful. What was that all about? Well, that was a custom they had. And they got that from the Bible. Revelations chapter 1 and 2, where Jesus' hair was white like wool. Notice that it was always white. That's where that came from. It was just a custom. It was something that they did. Thank the Lord we don't do that anymore. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I believe I'd have had to defy that one. I just don't see me doing that. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, let's, we're going to look at some things this morning and see what God says about it. Now, let's look at uh, uh, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Now, I remember you know the word head can be used in more than one sense. Uh, 
the head of every man is Christ. Right? So when our head, physical, sitting on your shoulders is covered, we dishonor our head. Because we're praying with our head covered. We're praying with something in between us. Do you understand what he's saying? The head, the word head's in there twice, but it has two different meanings. Okay? So, I'll read it again. Uh, Every man praying and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. That's why when you come into God's house, you're supposed to take your hat off. It shows respect, and it's not dishonoring your head, the Lord. It's a sign of disrespect and dishonor not to remove your hat. Okay? So, a lot of times... We have, from time to time, we have people come in here and they, they just forget. Just being honest with you, they just forget. I mean, I, I've done it myself. I've been out here working, have a hat on, come in here and not even be thinking about it and, and, and have my hat on. And, and then it hit me later, just take my hat off. It's just a sign of respect for, for God, okay, for the Lord, okay, not to dishonor Him. And from time to time we have somebody comes in and they forget to take the hat off. And I usually go to them and they usually no problem, they take their hat right off. Except one time. <laughs> there was one incident here. Most of you never even saw it, never even caught it. We had a special service. I don't remember what it was, but we were pretty packed. We, I mean, we were pretty packed. We had a pretty good, pretty good crowd in here. And there's one older gentleman sitting toward the back. He had on a hat. And I noticed him, and nobody said anything to him yet. And I thought, well, I'll just go remind him. You know, he probably just didn't think about it. I went over there and I said, sir, good to have you today. I said, uh, we're glad you're here, but could you remove your hat in the service? And he looked at me and he said, I'd rather not. I said, sir, out of respect for the church and the Lord, uh, I'm asking you to take your hat off. I'd rather not. I'll just leave. And he got up and we walked out. Rather than take his hat off and show respect, he decided to walk out. Mm -hmm. Another sign of disrespect. Say, what'd you do? I got out of his way and let him go. I'd rather him leave than continue to sit here in rebellion and disrespect and teach our kids that it's okay. See, sometimes what may seem like cruel and unusual, preacher, you should just let him sit there. His hat ain't hurting nothing. No, it ain't hurting a thing. But it ain't helping anything either. It ain't helping our kids learn respect. See, when your kids, when your kids see you remove your hat, what'd you do that for? And then there's an opportunity to tell them why. And it teaches them to honor and respect their head, which is you, parents. You understand? <laughs> All right, but anyway, let's keep going. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that she, excuse me, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. In other words, uh, a woman that prays, it's different for a woman. A, a woman that prays is supposed to co- have a covering on her head. Okay? Uh, if you don't, it's just like you've been shaved, according to that passage. It's just like there's, there's nothing there. And you say, well, why is it different for a woman? Well, uh, look at verse 15. Now, some of you women, you're, you're in panic mode thinking, well, I pray all the time, my head's not covered. Well, is it? Look at verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for, given her for a covering. So your hair is your covering. Is a covering. Just like a man was not supposed to have anything on his head because it represented something between him and his head, the Lord, a woman is to have a covering because there is something between her and the Lord, the man. In the marriage bond, the the man is between them. She is to be submissive to the man as he follows the Lord. That's the picture. Now, I know doctrinally we're equal. Doctrinally we're equal, but practically the woman is to be in submission to the man. Although doctrinally you can go to the Father and pray without the man. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of confusing, but it, 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 it's plain when you read it. Look at verse 6. 
For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. If you're not going to cover your head, just go ahead and shave it off. But if you be, uh, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Paul's pretty rough, wasn't he? Paul doesn't. He he he, he don't hold back. He says if it's a shame shame to be shaven, and you're not going to cover your head, uh, then shave it. Amen. Now we're going to get into the women that like to shave their heads and stuff like that in just a second. I'm going to run you through here and then we're going to come back and make some comments on this subject of hair and hair length. Uh, for a man indeed ought not cover his head for as much as he is in the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. See, there's giving you the divine order again. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. God created Adam. And from Adam came the woman. That's what it's saying there. For the man is not of the woman. God didn't make woman first and then out of woman came man. It's right the opposite. Man was first and the woman was created from the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. No, but the woman for the man. See, why did God create the woman? Because there was no help meet for Adam. So the woman was created to be a help meet for the man. For this cause of the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now that's talking about that power on her head. It's talking about that covering again. That's the context that we're dealing with, that covering on her head. And when it said because of the angels, now I'm going to be honest with you, that threw me for a loop. I started studying, reading everything I could get my hands on. And most commentators say this, and I disagree with them. I disagree with them totally. Most commentators say that's the pastor. But the power on her head is the pastor, and they, they make some kind of crazy, it, it doesn't even make sense what they're saying. They're basically saying that they, because of the angels, that angels were referred to as pastors in old times, and they go through all this ring and rule trying to prove something that ain't true. I believe when it says angels, it meant angels. So when you go to run in angels, the reason that they have their covering is because that shows that shows that they were taken, basically. They were, they were submissive. They were following what they should be doing. And a woman that don't have a covering, a woman that shaves her head, shows rebellion. And when she shaves her head and shows rebellion, guess who's watching? Angels. Those same angels in Genesis 6 could have seen the rebellion of the people in that day and that the women was open. And they came down and they took women, wives, all of which they chose. And that's going to happen again in Revelation 12 when angels are cast down to he from heaven during the tribulation. When Satan and his angels are cast back down, Genesis 6 is going to repeat itself here during the tribulation. How are they going to know? How are they going to know who they can? How does a lesbian recognize another lesbian? Now this is going to sound terrible, but they show it by rebellion. And how do they show rebellion? They shave one side of their head. And they leave the rest of it long. Or they'll shave both sides. They'll put on men's clothing and they'll wear. I was, I was studying yesterday and Angie had sat down and got her something to eat or something like that. I think she was taking her snack. She'd, we'd been working in the woods so and she, she come in to eat. And uh, I come through and the, there was something on TV. She, she turned on trying to catch the news or something. But there was something on TV and it was a soccer team. I think some soccer team had won some championship or something and they had all the girls up there and they had their medals and all that stuff. And a woman was handing out a trophy. I just happened to walk in the room and a woman was handing out a trophy and I said, lesbian. <laughs> you said, why did you say that? Because half of her head was shaven. She had on a man's tie and slacks and she had on men's dress shoes. Now, what do you think that is? That is rebellion. She's just openly, defiantly wearing men's clothes. She is dressed like a man. She's shaving her head. She's took her covering off in defiance. You see what I mean? Uh, the Bible said, we read it, that, you know, uh, verse 15, 
For if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. It's, it's y'all's glory, that long hair, and it is for and it is given to her for a covering. So what do they do? They take it off. I don't need any man. I don't need any man. I'm as tough as any man. So they dress like a man. They talk like a man. Amen. That sounds funny. It sounds funny, but there's some truth there. Now, where was we at? Verse 8, 9, 11. There we go. Nevertheless, in spite of what he just said about the woman having a covering over her head, nevertheless, is neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Now, verse 11, he's saying, in light of what he just said, nevertheless, there, that first word, uh, neither is the man without the woman. The, without the woman, there will be no man. But women, without the man, there'd be no woman. Right. Are you with me? The Lord, we need each other, amen? We're, it takes two, amen, or we're just going to die off, and that's it. That, that's, why, that's what's wrong with... Uh, homosexuality and, and lesbians. They don't reproduce. Yeah. God created man and he put him in the garden and he said, uh, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. They can't carry that <coughs> command out. Why? Because they don't reproduce. Men with men and women with women don't reproduce. That's against nature. That's not how God intended it to be. They are defiling themselves, among themselves, defying the command of God. Yeah. Everything that's a sin is because of rebellion. Whether they openly realize it or not, it is a rebellion against God. Okay? And God's plan. Verse 12. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Yep, woman came from Adam, and since then, men have come from women, amen, through pregnancy and childbirth, so, but all come from God. God has to bless the conception, amen. God's the one that gives us the breath of life. It says, judging yourselves, it is comely that a woman pray unto God, excuse me, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Now, you see a woman who's openly defiant and shaves off part of her hair and, and, and just picture the woman that I described I've seen on TV. If she come into church and was praying, would that look right? There's something just in you that just says something's not right about this picture. Common sense kicks in. Whether you realize it or not, even nature teaches us. Look at verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame to him? There's some good old common sense, what old timers used to call horse sense. It just don't look right. Now, if a man has long hair, it should be a shame to him. Now, let me, let me say this about long hair. I remember... One time, uh, I remember one time when I was in school during the summer, I was working some of the furniture factories and I was working at Orbit Industries. It's on Highway 90 across from Scott School and the railroad track runs right beside of it. And every now and then they would stop a car, leave a car from a railroad, rail car there and they would load furniture on it and then the, the, you know, the engine would come take it away. Now, where I worked was a big door that opened up, and I was a cushion filler. You know, they, they would fill the cushions and regulate them out and everything, zip them up, and they was ready to put in the furniture. So I was doing that, and there was a, a couple guys that, that did that, and a girl, and walking by, you see this long hair walking by and everything, and one of the guys just caught a glimpse of long hair and he ran out there and started looking and he started watching. And he called the other guy over there and they were standing there looking and the next thing you know, they started whistling. And this long-haired 
person turned around and had a beard. <laughs> it gave him the California howdy, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but see, it was a shame because his hair was halfway down his back. He looked like a woman. He was mistaken for a woman. He was treated like a woman and then got offended by it. But see, doesn't nature teach you something that's not right about that? Yeah. Just like it's not right for a woman to be running around with a G.I. Joe cut. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not normal. It's not normal, okay? Now, let's keep going here. Uh, we've read verse 15. Uh, look at verse 16. 15 is pretty well self-explanatory. Uh, verse 16. But if, a, but, if it, but if any man seemed to be contentious, if you want to argue about it, we have no such custom. There's been all kinds of customs. We talked about George Washington wearing the wigs. We talked about over in the Arab countries, uh, predominantly your Muslims, they even cover their face of women and their, and, and their whole head. Here in America, we've got Amish. We've got uh, Mennonites, the Amish and the Mennonites. Their women still wear coverings over their heads and stuff. And, and that's where they get it. But I guess they didn't see verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. So, ladies, don't panic if you're not wearing anything. Your hair is your covering. Amen. Now, uh, I do know that it is a practice in in America that as, as women get older, their hair gets shorter. How many of you have ever noticed that? Even my wife. My wife's hair used to be longer, but when you get older, it's, it gets, your hair ch texture changes, it starts coming out, falling out. You say, men's hair don't, men, women's hair don't fall out. Oh yes, it does, it falls out too. And, and they've learned the shorter they cut it, 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 it's easier to manage and everything like that. That is not rebellion. Rebellion is when you shave one side of it to the scalp. Or you shave your whole head. You understand what I'm saying? That is, whether you realize it or not, that's what it is. It's a sign of rebellion. So your hair is your covering. Uh, people always want to say, well, well, what's short and what's long? Well, in Leviticus 19, God tells Israel, uh, the men, not to round the corners of their hair or their beard. Now, the Jews were required to wear long hair. Why? Because it was a shame for a man to wear long hair. They were to be a peculiar people. They, that, that was a shame to them, and God humbled them, was trying to humble them through that. So they weren't to round their beard, you know, they, they didn't keep it. You know, couldn't tell if a man had a chiseled chin or if he didn't have a chin at all. You know, it was just the beard just grew. And, and everything. It wasn't neat and taken care of. He didn't have the the creams and the waxes and stuff to keep it all pretty, you know, it was just there. And it was a shame. It was a shame to him. And you always have this question as well. Uh, now again, that's Leviticus 19 that made them a peculiar people. Uh, you always have this question, well, did Jesus have long hair? Depends on who you ask. If you ask Jack Kyle's, no, Jesus had short hair. But I don't think that was right. Jack Kyle's, I, I like Jack Kyle's, and don't get me wrong. Jack Kyle's is a good man. He was a good preacher. I mean, he did a great work up there in Chicago. He man, built the biggest Sunday school, in, or his claims, the biggest Sunday school in America. And it probably was. And he's got a great big school up there. But that don't make him right on everything he says. Right. You know, he said that Jesus had short hair. But he didn't. If Jesus had short hair, he sinned. You say, what do you mean? Because Leviticus 19 commanded God's people to have long hair on the men. That was their custom. That's what they did. And Jesus was born under the Jewish law, and he fulfilled the Jewish law. He would have practiced what the... What was known as the Nazarite law, which meant he had to have the long hair. So he had long hair. So people say, well, what's long hair? Well, I'll tell you about a man I know. Uh, you probably know who I'm talking about. I don't know if you remember 
said, sir, when he first came? No, no, no. You've heard about it, though. I love this man. I love this man to this day. He is, he is just something else. He was a young man when he got saved. And when he got saved, he just he was a wild man when he was lost. Then when he got saved, guess what? He was a wild man just for the Lord. Amen? And he had hair that went to his butt. I'm not kidding you. His hair was longer than most women's that you would ever see. I mean, literally, his hair went all the way down to his tail. And he was coming in to church with that hair. You know, waving that hair. And he was just, woo! All the time, he was just a ball of energy. I mean, he was just a ball of energy. And I remember one time, I was there on visitation. We was all standing around. You know, we had on our ties and stuff. And we was there on visitation. And he pulled up in his old truck. And he jumped out. And he threw his hair around. And went, woo! He was like Ric Flair of their church, you know. I mean, he was just something else. <laughs> and somebody started to complain. And I remember what the pastor said. The pastor, the pastor pulled somebody aside and said, don't you say a word to him. He's doing something for the Lord. Leave him alone. Let the Lord clean him up. See, if he cuts his... He knew that if he cut his hair for the pastor, as soon as he realized the pastor was just a man... He'd grow his hair back out. But if he cut it for the Lord, he'd have no problem. And see, that's the way I want to be. I, I don't want to go around telling people, well, you need a haircut or you need to do it. No, 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 no. Listen, I want you to get a good personal relationship with the Lord and the Lord will clean you up. Amen. And you be able to do business with the Lord. Amen. Now, Paul, he does say something here. I think I skipped a verse somewhere. Where is that? Uh, talking about custom. Yeah, it was 16. But if any man seemed to be contentious, wants to argue about it, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of customs and fads and stuff, and people people, people always say, well, like if you ask someone, so what? you ask a man, why do you wear your hair like that? Why do you wear your hair long? Why do you wear your hair long? Well, it's just a custom. You know, all the ball players do it now. All the ball players is wanting to have the long hair. The baseball players is getting the long hair. It's fads. It goes through phases. Used to be the GI cuts, the good clean cuts, and then, then it's long, and then they cut it off again, and then they grow it back long. It's just the fads of the time. I like to do right the opposite of the fads. Amen. If the fad is you, you wear a white shirt, I'll start wearing a blue one. Amen. Because I don't follow the fads. We're not supposed to follow the fads. Uh, I mean, uh, that's the fads of the world. Now, if the Lord wants me in a white shirt, I'll wear a white shirt. Amen? Regardless of what anybody else does. We're supposed to be following the Lord. Okay? But anyway, uh, but be, uh, uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm trying to get it all in before I run out of time here. Oh, let me get back to the to the women for a second. Now I know that I know this seems hard, and it seems you say, "Well, well, that's just that male chauvinist stuff. That's just this uh, toxic max masculinity that stuff." No, 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 no. According to the Bible, that's God's divine order, and you know it's true. I mean, uh, that's the way it is, and regardless, you're not going to get rid of a man. As much as you want to, you're not going to get rid of a man. As much as the lesbians shave, they can shave both sides of their head, tattoo the top of their head. I don't care. Uh, they can put a tattoo. I don't need a man on the side of their head. But they can't get away from the man. Because without the man, you wouldn't be. Without Adam, you wouldn't exist. Okay? So you can't get away from the man. And you say, well, I... <laughs> okay, what's your name? You don't even have a name. It was given to you by man. Well, when I got married, I kept my maiden name. Yeah, your father's name. A man. When you're introduced, it's Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. The man. How about this one? How about this one? Even the word woman, women, Notice the emphasis, men, men. 
well, well, I don't like that. Even when you go through your cycles, menstrual, men, even when you go through the change of life, menopause, nowadays they want to change their pronouns. You don't want to be her. H E, he, there's the masculine. She, S H E, H E, there's he again. Well, they changed the pronouns now. I want to be known as they. T H E, H E, there's he in the middle. Well, maybe call me them. T H E M. You can't get away from him. Amen. <laughs> That sounds horrible, but listen, you can't you can't beat God's word. Right. You can't beat God's word. Now I will say this, because of the Bible, the New Testament, women, Christian women have more rights and are treated with more respect than any other woman on the planet. You have more rights and more liberties in Jesus Christ than any other woman on the planet. Don't believe me, go into these countries where they're forced to cover their face, where they cannot learn to drive, where they cannot go to school and learn to read, where they are forced into subjection, where they are treated as nothing more than sexual objects. In Christ Jesus, women have liberty. It may not seem like it because... Women's Live Movement wants to usurp God's authority and make the woman the man. It's all in defiance. The most joy that you will have is fulfilling your role, God-given role. Just like I say all the time, the greatest joy you can have in this life is finding God's will and doing it. That's for a man or a woman. And you think, well, I don't want to be a subject to a man and all this stuff. Listen, men aren't the boss. We're subject to the Lord, amen? Right. And in the marriage, if you're following your husband, you're submitting to your husband, and he leads you astray, you're not the one that's going to pay for it. He is. You've done what you're supposed to do. He's going to pay for it. He's going to answer for it. You understand? So that's liberating in itself. But anyway, any questions on that? I know that's some customs and stuff that we don't do and don't practice. Now, uh, you want the, my opinion, the long and short on it? Let every man work out his salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Women, don't shave your heads. And men, cut your hair. Amen. Don't look like a woman. People start whistling at you, it's too long. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think men should look like men and girls should look like girls. Amen. Right. Amen. All right. No questions or comments? Any questions or comments? All right. Uh, go ahead, brother, and ring the bell. We're over.